This video is brought to you by Henson Shaving. For 12 consecutive years, Samsung led the pack as the world's largest manufacturer of smartphones. However, that reign ended earlier this year, with Apple briefly stealing the top spot from the once dominant South Korean manufacturer. Samsung might be back on top now, with data from Q3 showing Samsung ahead once again. But the margins are looking tighter than ever, with Samsung being the only manufacturer in the top five to actually see year-on-year -year sales fall. So what's happening? How did Samsung's dominance of the smartphone market slip? And more generally, what lies ahead for South Korea's tech darling? Now, before we enter Samsung's woes, it's worth outlining what the company actually does. Because despite the attention we placed on smartphones thus far, Samsung is far, far bigger. Outside of communications, they, they also have a whole load of other consumer tech. Everything from the TVs and fridges you might have in your own home, to weird stuff like this ball-shaped rolling robot AI assistant. Which honestly, I don't know what it is or why you would want it. All I know is that I kind of do want it. Anyway, Samsung's not just selling stuff to idiots like me though. They also make a whole load of money from the manufacture of parts used in other companies' products. When it comes to parts, Samsung's most notable divisions are semiconductors and display panels. These are some big businesses too. Samsung Semiconductor Arm is the world's leading manufacturer of memory chips, including DRAM and NAND flash memory. Chips that are not only lucrative, but also crucial for everything from smartphones and computers to servers. As such, Samsung is actually the world's largest semiconductor company by revenue, bringing in in excess of $200 billion annually. When it comes to displays, Samsung also has a dominant foothold in the market. Samsung is by most metrics the world's biggest manufacturer of OLED panels, with them selling their displays and display tech to companies all over the world including their traditional rival, Apple. Samsung is also at the forefront of the development of flexible and foldable OLED displays, a relatively niche market, but one that's receiving a lot of attention, in part because of Samsung's own product lineup. Together, these four divisions, communication, consumer electronics, semiconductors, and display panels, essentially make up all of Samsung as we know them today. But despite this relative diversification, the company still isn't in the best spot right now. So let's run through a number of reasons why Samsung is struggling, starting where we began, the smartphone market. In recent years, the smartphone market has definitely matured, with growth and innovation in the segment having slowed significantly. With fewer new consumers entering the market, big players like Samsung have had to fight harder to maintain their market share against upstart and innovative rivals. Unlike Apple, whose near total dominance in a number of Western markets has allowed them to maintain a strong lead, Samsung has faced intense competition from Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo. These companies offer competitive pricing, innovative features, and aggressive marketing strategies, all of which have eaten significantly into Samsung's market share. Now, Samsung attempted to fight against this by pioneering the new foldable phone market. They hope that by innovating hard, using their prowess in display design and manufacture, they'd be able to create a new premium market where they'd have a significant advantage. And to be fair, it did seem like a good idea. Folding phones could inject life into a stagnant market by offering something new and exciting. They allow Samsung to charge a premium price for this exciting new tech. And once consumers started demanding these folding devices, it would be hard for other companies to catch up, as Samsung were also the leading manufacturer in the folding screen space, giving them a significant lead. The problem is that the folding phone market is yet to catch fire in the way that Samsung expected. Not only has demand among consumers been more muted than they hoped, with folding phones still representing barely 1% of the smartphone market, even five years after Samsung first rolled out the tech, but competitors have also proven to be much more formidable than they thought. Huawei recently attracted attention with their new Mate XT, the world's first tri-foldable phone. And while this near $3,000 phone might not be about to take over the smartphone market, it demonstrates Huawei's ability to beat Samsung at their own game, something they've been doing consistently, with them recently overtaking Samsung as the biggest manufacturer of folding phones. When it comes to Samsung's other businesses, well, things aren't looking much rosier there either. 
In fact, despite a whole load of good news in the chip industry of late, with huge demand for AI-related chips buoying many firms, Samsung's chip business is actually struggling. That's because Samsung is actually very reliant on specifically memory chips, a market which isn't actually booming alongside AI demand, and in many places is actually declining thanks to the recent global economic slowdown suppressing consumer electronics demand. It's also because Samsung has fallen behind when it comes to advanced AI memory chips. In fact, Samsung has struggled to get its latest chips certified for NVIDIA for use with AI accelerators, allowing its competitors to not only profit from the latest AI boom, but also to get further ahead. In fact, they've recently fallen behind fellow South Korean company SK Hynix, who, alongside other companies like Micron Technology, have been able to profit hard from huge AI-related demand. Now, Samsung do insist that they are making progress here, and recent announcements do seem to be giving the market some sense of optimism, with Samsung's market share up 3.6% and Hynix is down 4.6% following Samsung's earnings call this week. But it's not just Samsung's own chips that are facing challenges. Their foundry is also facing serious competition. Essentially, a chip foundry, or fab, is a business that manufactures chips on behalf of other companies. So if you can design a chip, but don't actually have the incredibly specialist and expensive technology required to manufacture it, you can go to a fab. This was once a fairly major business for Samsung, but with former clients like Apple moving to competitors and the dominant TSMC boasting significantly more advanced tech, this business is also under pressure. Now, Samsung is still a major player in all of these areas. For instance, we might be critiquing them for losing share in the smartphone market, but they're still the world's largest, with them also still maintaining a lead in many areas of manufacturing. However, these issues do seem to be worryingly interconnected. So if Samsung aren't able to get a hold on their spiraling manufacturing and technology issues, this could have a knock-on effect on their consumer hardware business, which, which in turn could significantly hit their brand, worsening their manufacturing issues, and so on and so forth. Samsung might still be at the top right now. They're going to need something big in order to maintain that lead. And when it comes to manufacturing prowess, Samsung might want to take notes from this video's sponsor, Henson Shaving. If you're sick of the gimmicks that other shaving brands use, the subscriptions, moisturizing strips, lasers, whatever, then you'll want to check out Henson. Because, and here's the dirty secret about the razor industry, even the cheapest dollar store disposable razor will likely give you a reasonably good shave. The challenge is the impact they'll have on your skin. So to protect your skin while shaving, you need to actually support the blade properly. And Henson can provide that quality shave, even with cheap blades, thanks to the Henson razor, which they produce at their aerospace machine shop, which has also produced parts for the ISS, and which perfectly holds blades at a 30 degree angle, and extends them only 0.0013 inches, less than the width of a human hair. In classic TLDR style, that's important for three reasons. Firstly, it's way cheaper. Those fancy blade cartridges aren't necessarily designed to provide a better experience for shaving. They're about jacking up prices. Instead, Henson's razor takes standard razor blades that cost just 10 cents each, meaning that while the initial handle might be more expensive, in the long run, you'll save a ton of cash. Secondly, it's far better for the environment to be using individual blades rather than joining the 2 billion razor cartridges thrown away every year in the US alone with Henson's products containing no plastic at all, even in their packaging. Finally, this superb engineering and precise blade tech just provides an incredible shave. If you want to try it out, click the link in the description, then add a razor and 100 blades to your cart. Once you've done that, use our discount code TLDR at checkout, and you'll get all of those blades totally free.